bubble, who bubble is at, screen at the moment presenting. working on the proposal, I think. I've had a little exchange with her for the link to the um, EU advocacy group budget. Um, I um, offered to do this talk quite a while ago, really enthusiastically, not realizing <laughs> that at the point, the point that I'll be delivering this talk will be a week before the deadline for the APG proposal. Um, well, no, because I need, I need the, no, ah. no, I need the slides. This is like double, double screen. Double. So, um, this is gonna to work. <laughs> this is gonna work brilliantly. Um, So like uh, Claudia very kindly said, I've been doing, I've been helping or doing the program proposals um, for the last five years or so, since the beginning of the chapter pretty much. Um, so I will be focusing on the FDC, so the Foundation uh, Annual Plan Grants um, lessons and process. I'm hoping this will be useful to anyone, even though from what France was asking, it seems like not that many of you are actually in that process, but I think it will be useful for any sort of grant uh, um, work in any case. Um, so I'll be talking about how to work with the funder, um, how to focus plans, what, um, what does impact mean, uh, how to apply learning, stuff like that, and it will be focused on Wikimedia UK journey. Uh, based on the history of the comments we've had from FTC, from the Funds Dissemination Committee, and yes, I have read all of them from the last five or six years. What a joy. Um, so, just really quickly about Wikimedia UK context, which I think will be useful to understand where we're coming from. We, when we started the uh, grant proposal process, we already had staff, maybe one or two, but we already had people that were actually paid for this stuff. Um, when we got created as a chapter, this was a period of quite intense growth. Um, we had, and that was encouraged, we had almost too much money, uh, more money that we knew what to do with. Um, we also had some fundraising uh, ourselves, so there was just there was just this, uh, there was a lot of money, we wanted to do everything, we were replicating everything else that was happening in the movement, all sorts of projects, and uh, we were trying to do everything that our members and volunteers and the board and staff wanted to do, so we were, when we started the grant process, we were in this confused, unfocused, abundance state, and then as we had more money pressure, that triggered the need for more focus and better planning. Um, and, and I think the kind of reason for that more focus came from the funder, from Wikimedia Foundation, and that's what I'll talk about first. Um, I actually think, I don't know how many of you will agree with me, but I actually think we're quite privileged in that we can talk to our funder to the Wikimedia UK, our funding, about half of it comes from the foundation and I think it's really amazing, I think we're privileged that we can talk to them and um, a lot of our funders that uh, give money to our work might just reject our proposal and never, we can, we might never hear from them, we might not even know why they've rejected us, so actually talking to them is very important. It gives an opportunity in the annual plan, for example, to explain why things matter to you, what is your context, um, why you're doing things the way you're doing. So for example, I was at a talk earlier from uh, Wiki Expeditions from Macedonia, where you guys were saying that you don't have many roads, and that's why it's difficult to organize those expeditions, and uh, maybe a bit more tricky than otherwise, and, and that is actually something that might be obvious in your country context, but uh, it is useful to explain, because it gives context and a reason to what you're doing in the proposal. Um, and that kind of links to my other point, that if you get criticism in your annual plan grant, it's important, I think, to address them directly. In the UK, we have a culture of, um, of not talking in a direct way, 
um, of being a little bit um, passive aggressive maybe if you receive uh, uh, criticism and I was, I was asking my colleagues in the office how would they illustrate passive aggressive behavior and this is the best we came up with <laughs> um, I, <laughs> but, but I hope I hope you can you can see my point that um, that in the past we would have gotten feedback from the FDC and we would have gotten a bit cagey and passive aggressive about it and not address it uh, explicitly. For example, a couple of years ago FDC said to us, it is unclear how delivering project grants will bring that bring new volunteers in will increase participation or how media files donated will result in quality. And it's easy to just get a bit angry about it and uh, ignore that comments. But actually, what we started doing, inspired by Austria, is uh, relate, address those explicitly and kind of say, explain why we're doing things in a certain way. And in fact, FDC has in the end appreciated that uh, their recommendations have been followed and that we're specifically referencing them in our proposal. Like that was something that was very positive. Um, so those are my points about generally working with the funder. Does that make sense so far? Yes. I'll go now to some specific areas of what I've learned uh, that works in doing proposals over the last couple of years. And the first thing, the very important thing and something that we've changed uh, since the beginning is bringing focus to our plans. Um, what we used to do is list every single thing that we're doing and describe the purpose of that project. So say, I don't know, Wikilos Monuments or a photo exhibition, like all of that would be um, listed and they would all have individual targets. And what would result is just quite a messy, it's quite a messy and kind of confused uh, proposal. And for example, a comment we had from FDC was, um, Wikimedia UK's programs are not focused enough and Wikimedia UK has not fully defined its goals and metrics or provided justification for what it wants to achieve. And I think this is, <laughs> this is a result of framing of the way we've described our programs. Um, what we're doing now is we have three main strategic goals. Um, so it's more like a top-down approach, right? We have those three strategic goals and everything that we're doing feeds into those three goals. So say we have a diverse, diverse content strand of work and we would have Wikileaks monuments, editathons, content, donations from different uh, organizations. All of that would feed into that one goal. And so it would make sense why we're doing something because we're aiming for that one thing. Um, and the comment we got from the most recent proposal was Wikimedia UK has a strategic approach. It clarifies the relationship of its programs to its long-term goals and it includes measurable targets in each of these areas. It also, the plan also includes an assessment of its context and the resources like finances or stuff needed to achieve those goals. So that's particular feedback that we got, but I actually think it's a really good advice of how to do a project plan. Um, that, it's, that it has that strategic view, it has targets and goals for each area, uh, it has assessment of context, like I said before, the context is important, and resources. Um, I think this is when we, once we've changed this, all of our work start, started making much more sense. So we had the focus of the plans. And the other thing that it allowed us to do is to focus efforts. So, you know, we have limited amount of volunteer resources, of staff resources. Once we know which strategic goals are important and um, which deliver the best plans, we know that that's where we can focus staff efforts, for example. Um, and because in the past, for example, we had uh, FDC was saying that our staffing is not going to the most effective areas and that we should reevaluate the use of staff to achieve the greatest impact. And um, so, for example, one thing that we're known for as a chapter is the um, really effective GLAM partnerships. And we have changed the staff structure so that pretty much the whole of the program team is working on partnerships. 
Um, so we're driving the effort where our biggest impact is. Um, so that was kind of easy. The more tricky thing was something that I would say still feels a little bit like an impossible trick, um, which is trying to achieve... Trying to square this problem of FGC saying that we're not impactful enough, but also that we're proposing unrealistic growth at the same time. So it's kind of this magic trick of how to do those things at the same time. So for example, they would say the proposed growth is, is too quick, it's too rapid, and the amount requested is too big. At the same time, they would say uh, Wikimedia case impact um, is too low. Um, so in some ways, what we we're trying to do was not impactful enough, and on the other hand, we we're proposing too much. And to be honest, I still don't quite know how to solve this exactly. But I think the important thing is to, again, provide context so, if you, so the funder understands what you're getting at. Maybe deliver some pilots, so do small programs that is trying to prove the idea that you want to deliver, and then next year scale it and do a much bigger project. That's the best I can offer if you've got better ideas. I'd love to hear them. Um, what links with that is that um, the FDC, like any funder, I would think, wants you to be innovative and um, ambitious, but at the same time, it wants to believe that you are able to deliver the idea that you're proposing. And for many years, we've been trying to propose uh, world-changing uh, technology initiatives, which the funder knew that we don't know how to do. Um, so it would say stuff like FDC is concerned that Wikimedia UK is shifting its focus to technology without showing a successful track record in technology related programs. Um, so that again is a bit tricky because you want to do new projects but you want to frame them in the program proposal in such a way that makes the funder think that you are able to do that. So again it's a bit of a magic trick. I think the solution, again, probably is either doing pilots or small projects before or bringing some expertise uh, where you can show that you will succeed. So that's kind of specific areas uh, in the program that I've learned about. Um, the other thing that I've learned is the aspect of uh, money and budgeting in, in uh, program proposals. This might be obvious to you, but for me it was kind of it was kind of a lesson I had to pick up that um, when you're doing a program proposal, it's not just about saying what you're gonna do and having the different goals and targets and uh, framing the context. You actually have to link it with the costs and budgeting and money as well. That didn't come naturally to me at the start, but it's extremely important. I think it's extremely important in my chapter where uh, the finance person is separate from the programs uh, team and that can lead to like a separation of those two things. But actually, especially for the foundation in the, in the annual plan grant, it is important that they're directly related um, and that you're not just focusing on programs, that you're thinking about money as well and that efficient finances are as important as having impact and expertise. Um, so those are like my big areas of learning. Um, I now want to give you a couple of other smaller things that I've learned. Um, which, which particularly become relevant when you do the plans year on year, not just uh, a one-off. One thing is that using similar or like the same metrics, types of things that you measure, year on year is, is uh, super useful. It means that you can have, um, that you know what you've achieved in the previous year, so you can have baselines, exactly. It's easier to do targets. Everything becomes simple. Like in the in that five or six years that we've been doing the annual plans, I think four years out of the six we had different metrics every time, and 
It was it was uh, very um, entertaining, but also very difficult. So using the similar metrics, if you can, is very useful. Defining the metrics that you're using is useful as well. Um, for me, it might be obvious. I use one of the metrics I use is volunteer hours, for example, uh, the hours that volunteers. Uh, 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 donate to our programs, but this might mean a certain thing to me, it might mean something else for the funder, so actually it is useful to just like quickly explain what you mean by the different targets, uh, metrics, types of things that you've chosen. Um, it also is useful, my tip would be uh, that it's good to try not to have too many metrics, so the point isn't to measure everything that you can measure. Uh, you want to measure stuff that is telling you whether you're achieving your programs or not. Um, and actually, sometimes fewer metrics is better. So that's about the metrics. I think the other thing that is important is uh, capturing your learning, documenting the learning that you've had in the previous years and sharing it and perhaps even building that uh, sharing into the, into the plan. That's particularly important for the Wikimedia Foundation that you're actually thinking how to teach others, uh, like build it into the plans or, or learn from others as well. They, they really like that. Um, the other thing that they like is scaling and replicating. So that's kind of what I was saying about the, uh, about the pilots. Um, that solves the problem of, that, that proves that you've got the expertise, it, it, it helps with the impact. Anything that you can build into the plan like that where you're piloting something and then perhaps planning to do a bigger one next year is good. Um, we, and the, the other two things uh, is, is something that we have changed. We used to put into the annual plan grant how many staples we're going to have and what sort of printer we're going to be using. Apparently that's not of interest to the foundation. So if you're applying for annual grant, uh, don't talk about the printer. Um, so that's like quick tips. And now pulling all of that together, something that I want to share with you is learning and learning from your previous annual plan grant. So as a uh, wise man said, uh, using the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is uh, is not good. I think he said it slightly differently. Um, so, for example, for us, we did our volunteer support program the same way for, I don't know, two or three years, and we're very surprised that nothing's changing uh, until the FDC has told us that it is expensive and it's not showing any results, and then and then we changed it. The, the funder doesn't like where you're proposing the same thing that has failed in the previous year, that is exactly the same, expecting that something different will, will happen. Um, that feedback loop of the previous year and the next plan is very important. And um, for me, it's actually now, the, the time now is pretty good because we've just done the half year um, progress report. So we're reporting on this on the last six years, and we're just doing, like I said, we're just doing the plan for next year. So fresh of the press of those reflections and learning, we're doing the plan for next year, and that I think is is uh, is is really important uh, for the annual plan grant, and actually making those learning uh, that learning explicit. So you're saying, oh well, the volunteer plan we can see from half year report it hasn't worked, so we're gonna do it differently this year. Um, so that kind of feedback loop is very, very important. Um, and the last thing that I want to say might be obvious and it might be different in your context, but you know, we have a couple of staff members, we have the board and everything. By the end of the day, from my experience, it works best if only one person writes the annual uh, plan grant. Otherwise, it can feel quite inconsistent, it can be a bit messy or hard to read. We used to do it so that different people had different sections, but, and it can still happen, like different people can uh, input and they can brainstorm and put different stuff in, but I think one person should actually put it all together, otherwise it's quite hard to read. On the other hand, it's important that you don't uh, disengage other people from the process that you don't um, 
that it's not just one person and everybody else forgets about it because then nobody else is learning um, from the process and from what you're doing. So for example, I've just done the six months progress report, but I had like meetings with the staff team, for example, talking through what we've captured. So to make sure that actually everyone is benefiting and learning from the fact that we've just done this report, if that makes sense. A little bit of feedback from the audience, I like it. Um, so really, um, that, is, that is most of what I wanted to share with you. Uh, as you can see, when I was doing the presentation, I found different illustrations from, from Flickr Commons, and there was one picture that I found that didn't really fit into the presentation, but um, here you go. Uh, so this is time for questions. I don't know how to mount a uh, wildcat, but if you have any other questions uh, about my presentation, I would love to answer. And apparently, we have a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. we have a bit of extra time. So if you want to talk afterwards, um, I'm happy to do that too. Or we can have an extra break. That's also fine. <laughs> as, you, as you probably know, there was supposed to be uh, another presentation from Wikimedia Deutschland. Uh, Tim Morris didn't make it, so you can use this half hour to prolong your no, 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 coffee break. Not, which not, can start. Tim Morris is not here, but he had one hour. There is Marty is not, not, not coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no. I wasn't in the program committee. Tom <laughs> <Thomas. laughs> like me, innocent people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't in the program committee. Thomas was. So, however, you want to deal with this uh, with this half an hour extra? That's up to you, guys. I'm kind of not feeling any questions, actually. <laughs> so you don't feel like answering questions. Usually, it goes. No, I'm not feeling that there is any. It's I mean, slowly. The 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 after the first <laughs> question, there will be more and more at the end. You cannot stop. Okay. You, do you want to start? <laughs> um. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Was this useful? I kind of I wasn't yes. sure. It was. I wasn't sure what you guys were expecting, and this is quite specific to the annual plan grant. So perhaps as when whenever you start doing that, that will be useful. But I'm hoping it's relevant to any sort of grant process, uh, even if it's not annual plan grant, or even yeah. just to prepare, because a lot of people plan to become yeah. an IPG chapter yeah. and to, like the earlier you start um, creating your baselines for metrics mm. the easier it will like because that's what we didn't have we were like no, it up neither. On the plan. and that's painful as you yeah. said but the sooner you start getting an idea of what you can produce, produce with what input and document that that's the easier um, the transition to an APG <laughs> chapter will be for you so yeah. that I think that's yeah. something that everybody can take away from here Yes, um, yeah. that is a good question. I couldn't, I didn't see who was first. Okay. Okay. So I just Maybe. wanted to say that whoever of you who are starting to enter this process, um, so you're, you're not alone. <laughs> um, and, and you know the FTC yeah. process, if we're especially talking about that, is, is um, it's staff, there's Delphine, there's FTC members who are here. Um, you can talk to, and um, mm. it's you know don't try to do this on your own. Yeah. And, and you know talk to people like Daria, like Claudia, like myself, who've done this for many years. Yes, that's good. Take your time, and, yes. and we've all have made mistakes and learned from it. So, so you don't have to start all over. I think it's also something that I learned too. Like the sooner we start sharing, the better the results yes. are. Like yeah. because a lot of people tend to like having it vanish, uh, coming into existence uh, half an hour before the deadline. Yes. Um, but uh, I, I actually um, started to share um, our progress very early on with different stakeholders because then you actually have time to um, mm -hmm. change things, right? So. Uh, just because you talked about uh, the assessment of the impact in those reports, mm. and uh, then this question popped up in my head: How how does uh, is, is the impact also measured? You know, like if you look at the whole UK, is it also like is one of the metrics also how much the activities or the impact is centered within like Greater London, or I mean. If you I mean, UK is mostly London. Yeah, but, <laughs> but is, there, is there some kind of metric how much you 
are carrying it out of the nation's capital. Okay. Like how much impact are you having in Aberdeen, for example? Mm. And I wonder like how even larger countries are, are mm. doing that. Because I mean, uh, in lately we've always heard about something like uh, truly global movement, yeah. but actually it's the global movement of maybe capitals. Mm. Do we need? Well, the problem is we don't have that data. So we, we can't even tell how the Austrian um, editorship is evolving as opposed to the whole German-speaking Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia. So, and then not even breaking it down to like uh, cities. Like We can't even break it down to no. our own country. Mm -mm. So that, that was public for a while, but the last five or six years mm -hmm. it was not published anymore. So that would be actually really interesting for us to see. Um, between the German-speaking countries, and then of course on yeah. the local level probably too, but at the moment we don't even have it um, according to countries, so if you don't have a Wikipedia for yourself, it's almost impossible to measure the impact of the different affiliates. Sorry for answering. No, yeah, no, no, I, I was just thinking, it is, it is an interesting question. Um, I mean, like, yeah, because we work mostly on English Wikipedia, and that's a big ocean, but unfortunately uh, we also have a couple of buckets. Uh, like Wales um, or Scotland, which which has their own indigenous languages, and actually, uh, it is fairly easy for us to show that we've doubled the size of Welsh Wikipedia, for example, just through existence of the chapter and doing programs there. So, so that's in a way easy. I think I think UK, yeah, it would be difficult because there's also like other open knowledge organisations. You know that whole sphere is quite active. Um, so metrics on Wikipedia, on English Wikipedia would be quite difficult. I think where we can show, where we can show larger impact is in kind of advocacy and changes in individual institutions, for example. So for example, we would have, we have changed the way that, um, uh, cancer Research UK uh, licenses its uh, cancer diagrams, for example, so that they're now accessible for, to everyone and they're viewed however many million times, right? And, and that medical information is accessible now. Or we're working with um, Heritage Lottery Fund, who is the largest cultural programs funder in the UK, but it requires non-commercial licenses to any of its projects. So once and it will happen, we get them to change those licenses, that will be a massive impact on the whole of the UK. Mm -hmm. But it's... Well, it uh, it's it hard, I don't know what you're... Were you asking about metrics yeah, specifically? Okay. Everything, everything was really interesting, but uh, just like as a follow-up <laughs> question, uh, like, uh, like just maybe personal opinions of people, like, is it better to have like two people in London or one person in London and one person in Aberdeen, or uh, person. the example, yeah, like somebody who's able to organize something. Oh, like spread and, out, for yeah, sure, but spread out, to be like, honest, or I mean, the Netherlands having one person spread, definitely. in Rotterdam and one no, person definitely. in I mean, Bay, we, we, our office is in London, and most, most big national and international organizations are in London as well, right, but we are actually really spread out, and most of our Wikimedians and residents are not in London, and I think that is... That is important, especially in the context of Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Cornwall, uh, that we have, that we are a UK, I mean, we are a UK charity rather mm -hmm. than a London one, right? Even if even if London is so much, it's, it's kind of so important. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it's a massive capital in the context of the country, but I would say yeah, the same diversity, I mean, Austria, for, it's the same thing, no, I mean, sure. Vienna is definitely our center. Mm. Mm. No, I, I, I definitely think it should be distributed, because it's, it's like, it, because it's of diversity and representation as well, like, like I said, we're UK charity rather than mm. a London one. Yeah. Very interesting, thank you. Thank you very much, I will, it's not on Meta yet, but it will be. It will be. Okay. Any more questions? There is one there. Uh, oh, sorry. No? Yes, I would okay. like to ask you if you have some timeline for uh, making a proposal. Yes, 
Yes. We do, but I think it really depends on the context um, and whether you have staff. I, I think it. I think it really depends. But definitely, if if I was to say really quickly, I would say start earlier than you think. <laughs> you should, like Claudia was saying, because it is it is that kind of a deadline thing that you that you work to the deadline and you're kind of like focusing so much on writing and producing it that you don't have time to share it and actually have a proper discussion and, and talk to other chapters as well. So for example, um, like I said, the FDC, the funder, really likes inter-chapter collaboration and learning and sharing, but uh, round about this time where each of us is is just in their own little rooms trying to type up the, the application, that's kind of a difficult time to be discussing bigger projects um, but to answer your question I mean and also it's difficult to answer because we've done it a couple of times right so it's kind of uh, and we're for example this year we're third year of our strategy so a lot of things are just continuing it's faster essentially but we started like writing and uh, discussing solid ideas like before before August so kind of one for brainstorm and discussing a board meeting as well to discuss the general ideas uh, meeting with volunteers we have a partnership advisory board as well and then September writing writing mode so I would say at least two, two or three months but not you know solid writing but in a process does that give you a sense I think it really depends so hard to say but it's similar yeah. For our okay. Experience. Similar in Austria. Maybe I can give a quick response from our perspective. Um, for us, it's it's sort of we look at the whole year. So the proposal is just one milestone in the yeah. year. And you know the progress report and the impact report are actually the bigger pieces of work for us. Mm -hmm. And the proposal just becomes sort of the end point in our annual planning process where mm -hmm. we translate the the annual plan from German and from whatever mm -hmm. weird format we have in any particular year into um, into FDC. And um, so I would recommend that you look at the entire year and look at, you know, what are the, the, the deadlines for the two reports mm. and I'll work all that into your annual planning process. Mm. Um, so the proposal really is just one thing and when we find that at this point it's the easiest of all. Well, so yeah, yeah. And then the other thing for us is that we, for the organization that um, participate in this process, you know, we put the proposal in now, but we will get the decision about the funding in December um, for a year start in January or February. So at that point when we know how much money we have, if it's not the amount we've asked for, we have to do like another kind of round of planning to rearrange what we've wanted to do depending on how much money we have yeah okay. good no, it's skipping stop the lights I, I, I'm done we can are we done yeah thank you very much thank you, thank you.